You are used to the world. You have lived in it for a long time and are used to the way that objects move around it. Motion is hardwired into your brain. The study of kinematics helps you to unpick this hardwiring so that you can consciously and actively manipulate the world around and better understand what motion is. I believe that the study of motion is the most straightforward because you use it already. However, because you are so familiar with it, you struggle to accept the depth at which you must describe motion. Most of the time it is okay to describe objects as fast or over there. You show an intrinsic appreciation for motion, but you do not know how to communicate this properly with other people. You need to learn the way in which physicists see motion and how we describe it. You have already started doing this by listening to and understanding scalars and vectors. In this section we will begin to develop these principles into a better understanding of motion. Firstly, we must describe some terms. You are familiar with the concept of distance as the space between two points. You are also familiar with some distance measuring units, the metre, or foot, or centimetre. This is not the extent of the story of distance though. What is missing is something that is intrinsic to your understanding of distance every day, but not intrinsic in the description of distance to everyone else. Distance has a direction associated with it. Distance by itself can only tell you how close an object is to you or another object. If you want to describe where an object is relative to another person, you need to give your distance a direction as well. When you do this, you change our scalar concept of distance into a vector concept of displacement. The difference between these two can be described by taking a journey. If you want to get from point A to point B, the quickest way is a straight line. This straight line distance is called displacement. It is the shortest distance between two points. To describe how to take this journey, you define your starting point, give a direction and tell the person how far they have to travel, e.g. move 10 metres at a bearing of 10 degrees from your current position. Distance, however, is not constrained by a direction. If you take the straight path between two points, you will have used the least distance. However, there may be obstacles such as walls or mountains or trenches between you and your final destination. You will need to take a detour. This detour can be made up of multiple direction changes and can be as long or short as you imagine. The total distance you have travelled when in your way from A to B is the distance. It is the path you take from A to B without worrying about direction. If you say that an object is within 10 metres of you, you are giving a distance. The object you wish to bring to the people's attention is somewhere within a 10 metre radius of you. However, there are a lot of places within 10 metres of you, so distance is not as precise as displacement. Displacement can be broken down into other displacements just as any vector can be broken up into other vectors. We have covered this principle in the talks on scalar and vector properties. Now we have defined a vector for distance, displacement, we need to see how this affects other aspects of motion.